Luke chapter 4. Luca ne. Verses 25 to 27. I'm reading from the net translation. The Bible says, In truth I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in Elijah, Elijah's days when the sky was shut up three and a half years. And there was a great famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to a woman who was a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha. Yet none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. Father, we thank you this wonderful evening. As we share your word, we commit your wisdom. Speak to us in a special way. And receive all the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Have your seat. God bless you. And once again, thank you for coming. Now, the truth you do not believe in cannot work for you. You can be coming to church, attending church every day, until you believe the truth. You remain the same person. Here, Jesus is teaching. And if you read well, this is his first teaching. Because here, he is in Nazareth. The city where he grew up. So Jesus is now teaching in the synagogue. And he tells his own people. People who saw him grow. People who saw him when he was a baby. So Jesus told them that in the days of Elijah, when famine was in the land, God sent Elijah somewhere for provision. What is amazing, he sent Elijah, point number one, to a certain brook or brook to have drink there and then to be fed by the ravens. But here we are talking about Israel. We are talking about people chosen by God. Sons and daughters of Abraham. We are talking about the people who are given the law by God himself. We are talking about the people for whom God came to redeem. We are not talking about the people who are trying to believe God. We are talking about the people who are born, you know, in faith. Or born in the word of God. So you can be living close to the word. And you die, go to hell. Because until you accept the word. And believe in it. Your faith cannot reward you. Can you reward. Now, Jesus went on to say that in the days of Elisha, we see that there were so many lepers in the land dying with leprosy. And one man, captain from Syria, a very long distance, you know, Syria in those days, it was far away, uh, uh, over 1,000 kilometers, to go to Israel. So this man traveled from Syria very far to Israel to come and receive his healing while the people to whom Elisha was sent died with leprosy. 
Wakati watu ambao Elisha alitumwa kwao walikufa kwa ukoma. So this is just amazing. Kwa hivyo hii ni ajabu. It's not a prophet who is teaching here. Sio nabii anayefunza hapa. Or an apostle. Ama mtume. Or a pastor from somewhere. Ama mtungaji kutoka mahali fulani. This is Jesus himself. Huyu ni Yesu mwenyewe. Teaching to his own people. Anawafunza watu wake. What is the teaching here? Somo hapa lenyewe ni nini? It's not, it doesn't matter I was born here. Or it doesn't matter I grew up here. It doesn't matter I entered this synagogue when I was still young. It doesn't matter you live around Mary. Some of you are my uncles and uh, aunts. It doesn't matter that. It is beliefs. When you believe when you trust in the word of God when you surrender to the scripture to the word now this word is going to work for you but you can sit near the word as long as you don't believe in it it cannot work for you I've seen so many people especially people who live near the man of God. Sometimes God gives you that opportunity to be near your pastor. To serve him very near there. And sometimes you can see some weaknesses. I've always said this. Why? God uses human beings. Amen. So this person, the way I'm standing here now, it's not about Tenguyoka. I'm standing now here. Even if you are Jael, be careful. Be careful. Oh. It's not about you and I. It's not about husband and wife. Here. Here, I'm carrying out the mandate. As I stand here now, I'm wearing the mantle of my calling. I'm wearing the mantle or mantle, if you want, of my calling. Automatically. So if I speak something here it's dangerous that God can stamp on it. That's why whenever we stand on the altar we try to be very careful as much as we can. Because you can speak something here and then the enemy pick somebody here through what you have just spoken here. Remember, Kumbuka. Jesus tells Judas, yes, Yudasi, what you want to do, do it now. Fanya sasa hivi. And the Bible says, Na nasema, automatically, Maramoja, Satan shetani, entered Judas. Aka Yudasi. John chapter 13, you can read it in your house. Buwana sifi. Now listen. Sikia. Jesus is your uncle in the flesh for people of Nazareth you are talking about him. or you are the aunt of Jesus but Jesus after the baptism the Bible says the spirit of God came upon him and started leading him in the desert from there in ministry and here when you see what is happening here this preaching starts at verse number 18 of Luke chapter 4 this first preaching the spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me. So the guy is under that mantle. So what happened? If you read from 20, uh, verse 28, the Bible says they were annoyed. When they heard these things, all the people in the synagogue were filled with what? Anger. Rage. 
Number 29. Look at this. They should trust the word of God. They should believe the word of God. But they reject to believe the word of God. They get angry. Why are you talking like that? Why are you branding this Naman, the Syrian, a pagan before us? You are branding him. You, you, you are lifting him up. And dishonoring us. Why are you talking about that woman? In Sarepath. A, a, a Sidonian. A Canaanite. Before us. They got angry. And then watch this. And rising up they pushed. And drove him out of the, the city. And lying hold of him they led him to the projecting upper part of the hill on which their town was built that they might push him you know just go down the cliff and die there because of the authority in him he just shook himself and then passed went away so they could not kill him because it was not his time to die but to do ministry now you and I were sitting here whatever Jesus said is true it is true that in the days of Elijah ravens were ordered to feed him. Why should ravens feed your prophet? Is he not shame? Because ravens remember what they did in the, in the days of Noah. Noah released ravens to go and look on the land and bring a report if the water are dry, you know, on the land. The raven went and started eating human corpse. The raven refused to go back. The raven is unclean among uh, birds. Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 11 you read that home so, God said have nothing to do with the raven because they are unclean they are evil but now listen because the people of the days of Elijah didn't see the value did not understand how to take care of their prophets they went after Bali remember eating food at the table of Jezebel running away from the word of God that's why go sent famine in the land. And then now, their prophet sent by God to bless their lives is fed by the ravens and unclean bird or animal. And then from there, the prophet is sent at Sarepath to a woman, a Sidonian, a Canaanite among the pagans the nations that God said go and chase them away so that woman will accept the prophet in her poverty she will share her food with the prophet while these people were having celebrating meat killing cows eating on the tables of Baal supported by Jezebel if you don't believe the truth it doesn't matter it is very near you it cannot work amen you can be the wife of a pastor. And you ignore 
the calling upon your husband because maybe you know the weaknesses of your husband I want you to know this before God called your husband he knew those weaknesses more than you do because the Bible is very clear God is omniscient he knows a thing before it began before something begins God knows already uh, Isaiah chapter 46 so before something starts God knows how it's going to end God uses human beings so he picks that man who is maybe your husband and God is using the person you ignore that you maybe start even fighting your own husband you fight the ministry listen man there is only two ways two things will happen which I'm not going to mention now but my point is this one it doesn't matter this man is your husband that man is a servant of God not Amen. because you want it but because God wants it am I talking sense yes uh -huh. am I yes Amen. Are you in this place? I see some of you are just happy. Why are you happy? <laughs> it's just a message. And I don't know why I'm saying this. I remember one day I saw a pastor come to my office. He told me this. Man of God, I'm tired. I want to leave. The preaching. I said, why? My wife she's troubling me I just want to leave I look into his eyes I, I asked him a question do you even understand what you are saying how did you come to ministry if God called you if you leave you die Remember Yona? If God called you, enjoy your calling. Amen. Because you run away, you cannot run away from God. The purpose for which you are living is that ministry. You run away from ministry, you are finished. Listen, God's people. You believe not because you love the person standing in front of you. You believe because it is the word of God. Elijah was wearing the, the skin of a camel. It's not about uh, Elijah. And Elisha, you know, he was uh, of a stature which was a bit uh, complicated, you know. He was not elegant. That's why even when he was passing by, children will follow him and uh, speak against him. Look at you, this man. Look at this bald guy. He was just somebody very complicated, you know, in, in, in the stature, you know. But he was a prophet full of anointing and whatever he spoke came from God. So when these children despised him he cast them and were eaten by bears. 42 among them died. God didn't say okay they are young. Uh -uh. They died. That's our God. Now listen when we talk about beliefs you don't believe the word because it is pleasing you oh here God has spoken well eh? I believe him God is not speaking because you are happy God speaks because it is his will 
Jesus says this. Yesu anasema hivi. While teaching people how to pray. Anapofunza watu kuomba. He say when you pray. Anasema mnapoomba. Say you will be done. Semeni mapenzi yako yatimizwe. Here on earth. Hapa duniani. As it has been designed in heaven. Kama ilivyotimizwa mbinguni. Ah uh, in this place. Je, tuko mahali hapa? Now listen. Sikia sasa. In heaven. Mbinguni. The will of God. Mapenzi ya Mungu. Is not decided. Hayajatengenezwa. Is not decided. Hayaamuliwi. When you wakati wewe make a request before God. Unapomuomba Mungu. Or when you believe in Jesus. Ama unapomwamini Yesu. The will of God for you. Mapenzi ya Mungu kwa ajili yako. Is from eternity. Church, I want you to listen now. And listen well. There is no accident in the plan of God. God knew you before your grand, 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 grand pa. So your grand, 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 grand ma. Already God knew you. The Bible says before the foundation of the world God knew you. He chose you already in him. So whatever we are doing here is just God taking whatever he had purposed before the foundation of the world and bring them to pass in our days. Remember what I told you one day that you are a product of eternity but revealed in this our days. Now listen. Whatever was about you was already programmed. Now when we talk about the word of God you will be done here on earth as it is done in heaven. Heaven doesn't do the will of God that particular time. It was planned from eternity. That is the will of God. It cannot change in my days. I cannot change what eternity had planned. Amen. Am I talking sense? Je, na ungea so what eternity plans Sasa ilichopanga umilele in eternity katika umilele will stand kita simama and stand forever. Na kusimama milele. So what is required of us Tunatustahili kufanya sisi is to tow the line. Ni kuchorea mustari. Tow the line. Ukaweke mpaka fata mustari. Ufuate mustari. Tow the line. Fata barabara. Simama kwa laini. Stand on the line and follow. Now what? That's the kingdom. What you see scientists trying to do to sit down and work on the word of God. It doesn't work that way. I'm in this place. Because when I was doing theology, the big challenge was between science, philosophy, and faith. That's all. Because scientists want to understand how did Jesus change water into wine? Oh, he just said fill the jars give to the people to drink. Science will tell you impossible. It cannot be done. How can water become wine? Jesus must process the water. Something must be done. You have to go and <laughs> Shaka mind do something and then uh, give us wine. How can we give water to drink? That is now science. And this science has been troubling all of us. Nobody in this house can claim that is not troubled by that. We do wrestle in our faith. When the word comes, you start wondering, is it doable? Because as a human being, you will always try to understand. To believe something you don't understand is a challenge. You have been trained to understand things. Since we were kids. So now when the word of God comes, you try to understand it. How is it possible? Now you have at least some 
science isn't it or some knowledge of science that you have learned for example when the word comes you try to compare the word with what you know and you see it's not fitting doesn't agree so you say how can that happen today morning I was carrying Mama Jael in the vehicle and then as we were discussing we just reached a place where we started talking when I was sick in hospital and the things that happened according to science I was a dead guy listen what I'm telling you go to Mata hospital my file is still there. Go and read it. Or come to my house. I give you the file what me have. Doctors called Jael in their office to prepare her to accept her fate. Your guy is dying. He has just few minutes, a few hours to live. So now you get prepared. The liver is dysfunctional. So the guy is dying. And time from now. I can't walk. Can't stand. Done finished. Yellow. The liver is big. Finished. This functional. This is according to science. He had few hours left to live. How about faith? Faith tells me. Believe in Jesus. Yesu Christo. And you have so many years to live. It was in which year? It was in two, two, two or three. In March, I think. March. Yes. Today. Leo. 23. 20 years down the line. This is what only our God can do. 20 years down the line. These people gave me a few hours. God gave me several years. Faith is not about understanding. You don't try to understand God because you will not understand it. what you do. Believe in God. Ken was angry because God received the sacrifice of Abel and rejected his. God told Ken, be careful. Why are you angry? Why are you not happy? Listen, in the kingdom of God, Pastor Macharia, this kingdom is not the kingdom of his uncle. Are you in this place? It's the kingdom of God. So that when you do caprice, you think he's going to help you. He will not help you. Because he's also bound to accept God, to believe God, to respect God, and to honor God. Amen. Now, if you refuse, what your pastor is telling you, it's not about a battle between you and your pastor. You have rejected God. God tells Moses, it's not about you. It's me that these people have rejected. And what happened? They all died in the desert. Numbers chapter 14, isn't it? They all died in the desert. Except their children who were born in the desert from 20 years down. Those are the people who entered the, the promised land with Caleb and Joshua leading them. Listen, people. They were under the cloud of glory. 
They were led by the pillar of fire. They died in the desert. In jaguani. the presence of God. You can die in the presence Unaweza of God. Wa mungu. If you don't believe. Amini, or accept. Ama kukubali, or trust. Ama what God is telling you. Mungu. Amen. Peter. Petro, sunk. Alizama, in the presence of Jesus. With that glory. This is God in the flesh. Jesus is there. Yes, you come up. He calls Peter. Petro. Come. Joe. I'm here. And Peter came out of the, the, the boat, went into the water. Walking toward Jesus. The master has called me. Do you believe in the word of the master? He has told you, come. Do you believe in his word? Do you believe you can trek on water? Because I told you the other day, if I tell you that a mosquito can pull a wagon, say amen. That's the word of God. <laughs> now you are going to tell me this mosquito it has no legs it has no muscles and look at this wagon how can a mosquito pulls a wagon it is impossible that's how we think not how God thinks so Peter came out of the Petro boat and started trekking. The Bible says there came a wind, upepo, strong wind, upepo mkali, coming with waves. Na ah, Peter now was shaken. Petro sasa. Ama na muna kan. Ndiyo. You go and read it. Wenda usome. Uh, uh, Matthew 14, isn't it? You go and read in your house. When he saw the wind and the waves, he started fearing. We do not succeed because everything is calm. Even in the midst of adversities, we succeed. Even when in the midst of troubles, we succeed. The Bible says, before my enemies, he set my table. That's the word of God. You are enemies surrounding you. And God sets a table for you. You start eating while they watch. God is not taking you aside. But in the midst of your enemies, holding their spears in their hands and their arrows and their knives navisu, looking at you. But God tells you don't worry about them. And he set you a table. Na na Sit down and wanda. start eating. You are eating Unakula. somebody standing here Mutu with an arrow and God tells you Mungu worry not about that guy behind you. I've set a table for you. Start eating. Another one is here with a machete. God tells you don't look at the guy. Start eating. That's how our God works. It's not just about being in peace. God can bless you while your enemies are watching. And he blesses you because is protecting you. Is fighting your battles. What you need just to believe. So Peter, don't look at the wind. Don't look at the, 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 the waves. Look at Jesus. The beginner and the finisher of your faith is the one who is telling you come forth. So keep moving forward. The wind is there. That's not my problem. He has called me. That's the word of God. We talk about faith here. 
the truth you do not believe in Ukweli cannot work for you. We were called for exploits. We are meant for exploits. We are meant for signs and wonders. The day we believed Jesus Christ, we ceased to be ordinary. We became wonderful people. Fantastic people. We are to shake our time to the glory of God. One day I was in South Africa in Soweto. As we went around to see what happened during apartheid Ubaguzi wa rangi. Wa rangi. we reached the place where this young boy called Johnson died the place was shot and how the sister carried him was running with him not knowing that he was already dead and blood all over if you go in that city you see all those things live life as I was watching I saw people from all over the world in Soweto people from all over the world to just come and see what happened now listen and then as I was watching we were with Peter Muteba and his wife Majael and other people and then I told him this is what I've seen today is amazing that boy died he was I don't know 12 or 13 years old defending is right. The things he knew. <laughs> now listen. Muteba told me this. He said, Bishop, you know that dying simple is a sin. I told him, can you repeat what you just told me? And then he said, I just said that dying simple is a sin. You need to shake your time. Huh? Wow. You know, it was just a fantastic word. I went discussing about it with my wife the whole evening. You are meant for signs and wonders. The only requirement believe God. Not because it makes sense. Believe God. Even when it does not make sense. Believe God. If God tells you that a virgin can get pregnant, how can a scientist believe that? The Bible says Mary believed. Luke chapter 1, 37. Luke chapter 1, 7, 37. For with God, Nothing is ever impossible and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. Amen. When God speaks, it is done. 38. Watch this. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to what you have said. And the angel left her. Are you in this place? I am the servant of God. Let it be done to me. The way you have said. She was speaking to the angel. Gabriel. So let it be done. They have spoken. Because before that, she wanted to understand how can I get a child? I don't know a man. I'm not even married. How can that happen? The angel said, the Holy Spirit 
will cover over shadow. Under the influence of the Holy Spirit, everything becomes possible. Remember what Jesus said to, to, to Nicodemus. The one born of the Spirit is like wind. John chapter 3 verse number 8, isn't it? John 3 8. The one born of the Spirit is like wind. The wind blows where it wills. And though you hear the sound of the wind, yet you never know where the wind is coming from or where the wind is going. That is the way of everyone who is born of the Spirit. Amen. Somebody under the Spirit of God, you can think the person is mad. The person is not mad. Because the person is under the influence of the, the Holy Spirit. The person sees what you don't see. He hears what you cannot hear. The person feels what you cannot feel. Amen. So she said, I am the servant of God. Let it be done to me according to your word. So, the scripture you see here is your blessing. Whatever written here is for your glory, is for your promotion, is for your expansion. So, you can do exploits. So, you can live a different life from the rest of the world. This Bible the word of God can change your life. When I pray in the night, ask Mama Jael. I've always told God, Hey God, the one who met me and changed my story. I have repeated that my entire life. Whenever I'm before God, I always tell him, the Lord God, the one who met me and changed my story and changed my life. That is our God. It doesn't matter where you have been. It doesn't matter where you are coming from. When he meets you, something will happen and something must happen. That is our God. You cannot meet him and remain the same. The only challenge say yes to his word. Say yes to his word. And then the rest is a testimony. Don't try to understand how is he going to do this? How is this going to happen? That's not your business. Your portion, your part, your role to play is to say yes. God has spoken. So shall it be. Just that. And uh, go on. Be happy. Start rejoicing. Change your face. Speak positive. It is coming. Because Yahweh has spoken. He is a commander in chief. Whatever he says. Becomes law. Even the wind obeys him. There is nobody. No situation. Can challenge God. Or ask him questions. We are stagnant. When we fail to believe, but when we start struggling to understand what God has said, understanding is not ours, but to believe. Point number one. I go back to what I said as I conclude. What did I say? Point number one knowledge. We said it on Sunday, isn't it? Knowledge. Ufahamu. What do I mean by knowledge? What you have just spoken now. To know how God operates. Let me repeat again. What God tells you now. You don't have the right to discuss with God. To challenge his word. Are we in this place? Because what God tells you now. You cannot change. It was established. From eternity. Jesus says. When you pray. Say our father in heaven. Your will be done on earth. 
as it is done in heaven. In other translations, they say it will be done on earth as it was programmed in heaven. So now, when God speaks to you, and let me tell you, God will always speak for your good. God will never speak to hurt you. Hakuna wakati Mungu ataongea ili akuumize. The devil is a liar. Shetani ni muongo. Ukisikia injili ya kukuhurt. If you, you get a gospel of hurting you. Ni haiku injili ya Kristo. It is not the gospel of Christ. Ah. Listen, you are better than Ken. Wewe ni zaidi ya Kaina. Amen. amen. God bless you for saying amen. I said you are better than Ken. Nasema wewe ni zaidi ya Kaina. You are better than the raven. Wewe ni bora kuliko kunguru. Amen. Cain, despite his heart, God came and told him, there is sin. It is lying at your door. You must defeat sin. Why are you not happy? You must be happy. You see, God cannot create you and deny you happiness. The devil is a liar. God wants you to be happy in everything you do. But do what he requires. And God said, if you do well, you are going to be happy. That's the word. You don't say, I want to be happy, but I don't want to do the will of God, but I want to be happy. Uh, there is no happiness outside the will of God. The happiness can is in doing the will of God. He refused to do the will of God. You know what happened? He went on to kill his brother. And then God comes. So the guy is now cast. And he went on wandering. So this evening I want to conclude my message. That Jesus loves you. He loves you with passion. He loves you seriously. Nobody should lie to you. That God hates you. The devil is a liar. You cannot be sitting. Under this anointing. And think that God hates you. The devil is a liar. You cannot be sitting under this anointing and believe that you are a failure in life. The devil is a liar. You cannot fail under this anointing. If you can fail elsewhere, not under this anointing. You are here to succeed. You are here to move forward. You are here to make it in life. You are here to make it to heaven. That's why we are here. Look at me well, maybe you don't know me. I cannot trust or believe God if he was a failure. I trust him because he's a faithful God. I trust him because he's undefeatable, unfailable. <laughs> I believe in him because this wonderful God I will talk like Polycar since I met him he has done me all his well nothing bad he has done me all his good he is a wonderful God and uh, you can trust him there is no regret in trusting God. So when you believe his word, you trust his word, you do his word, wait. There was this uh, man of God who ministered in 1990 something. He died in 1960. Four, five. Some other. And this man of God said this. If you have obeyed God, he has told you, bring that hand of flour. Make, bake a cake for me. 
Give me I eat. Then you shall eat. With your child. Believe him. Bake a cake. <laughs> Give him. And then. In his own word. Sit down. And watch his steps. Once you have done your assignment. You have done what is required of you. Sit down. Watch his steps. God has never failed anybody before. And you will not be the first to be failed.